Good morning. How's it going, everyone? Welcome, friends and colleagues. For those of you joining in person and remotely, my name is Lauren Anderson. I'm the University Associate Provost of Careers and Industry Partnerships at the City University of New York. It is my pleasure to be your MC for today's exciting announcement of the expansion of the CUNY Inclusive Economy Initiative. Woo, yes, please, applause. We really appreciate you all being here to celebrate this major milestone in the work that CUNY is doing to ensure that more of our students can connect to careers of their choosing when they graduate. Um, and those of you in the room, just to give you some idea, represent our industry partners. We have some campus leaders here. We have some frontline staff who are doing the work day in, day out. Thank you for coming. Um, as well as our supporters who are essential to this work. And you all have been working day in, day out to build proactive partnerships between CUNY departments and employers to prepare students to secure and succeed in the jobs that they want by helping them align their academic and preparation, professional preparation to the career paths that they would choose. And you're connecting students to thousands of paid internships and job opportunities across the five boroughs over the last few years. So thank you and round of applause for you for doing all this work. So we are really lucky that a handful of those partners are here to help us celebrate and share news about how this initiative will be expanding in the years ahead. And before we get started, just a very quick housekeeping note. If you have not already silenced your phones, please do so now. We're gonna be moving right through. Um, and to get us started, obviously, many of you have noticed we are in a beautiful space. We probably would all rather be out there looking at the sunshine after this. You can definitely do that. Um, but to welcome us to the space and tell us a little bit more about what is in this building, I'd like to welcome James Lovey. He's the Vice President for Investments at Company Ventures, which is an NYC-based venture capital firm. Um, he has supported tech-driven startups and has for many years run an internship program together with CUNY and his team, Mia, in the back, who made this all possible. They've partnered together with us in Blackstone Launchpad to ensure that students can connect to paid work-based learning in thriving tech sector jobs. Um, our alumni, some of whom were here a minute ago, Aurie over there, have gone on to work full-time at Company Ventures and other iconic employers across the city. So James, thank you to you and the team, and feel free to say a few words. Thank you, Lauren. Um, hello and welcome everyone to Company Ventures in our space here. Um, we're really excited to have you um, and excited to uh, announce the expansion of CUNY's Inclusive Economy Initiative. Uh, as many of you know, we're an early stage VC firm that has community at the core of everything that we do. We've had the privilege of working with the city through the mayor's office and the NYC EDC on a number of programs to help New York City founders grow and scale their startups and social enterprises. We're also proud to have been an active participant in workforce development programs in partnership with CUNY and Blackstone. Since 2014, we've connected hundreds of startups with amazing interns from CUNY schools. We also provide students support services, professional development, and mentorship to supplement their hands-on experience. Our collective goal is to empower individuals to reach their full potential. This means actively seeking out and removing barriers that have historically marginalized certain groups, fostering a culture of inclusion and tapping into new channels for recruitment. Last summer, with Mia Manson's leadership, we, find, we found placements for 50 students. 30% 30 of, 30 of the students have reported that they've worked with their host company at the end of the internship, and 91% have said that learning um, a culture of a startup and networking opportunities were the most beneficial part of their experience. This summer, we're excited to... <laughs> and this summer, we're excited to have placed 85 students um, who will begin the program in a few weeks on June 10th. These internships have had major impacts on students' early careers. Here's what they've had to say in their own words. I developed self-confidence in my work through working on meaningful projects and receiving positive feedback from my coworkers and intern peers. It was great to have the space to grow and find my voice in my professional career. The best part of the internship was being able to learn about applications that I've always wanted to learn, also networking and meeting new friends. On the flip side, I'm also proud to say that the early stage companies who are working tirelessly to develop new products, manage investor relations, 
and win customers benefited just as much as the students did sharing that it's a great program that we sincerely appreciate and has made a difference in our business. And this experience was fantastic overall, and we're grateful to be a part of it. We hope we can participate in the future. As you can sense from these responses, the program is truly a win-win for everyone who participates. Workforce development programs have been an important part to Company Ventures ethos since our inception. We aim to support a future tech workforce that is diverse across the spectrum and to ensure that pathways to tech careers are accessible to everyone. We believe that inclusive workforce practices drive innovation and enhance the resilience of businesses. True inclusivity is not a one-time initiative, but a continuous journey. It requires ongoing commitment, open-mindedness, and a willingness to adapt and learn. We're glad to be on this journey with you all and look forward to another great summer of supporting these students. Thank you, James. Um, we have the opportunity today to hear from a lot of our private sector partners who are making this work possible. And I just wanted to take one quick second to acknowledge the public sector partners who are in the room. Deputy Mayor Anna Almansar, thank you to your and your team and Mike Nolan for all the work you've done throughout the years to make this possible. We have the Executive Director of the Mayor's Office of Talent and Workforce Development, Abby Jo Siegel. Thank you for being here in your leadership. And now it is my pleasure to introduce a public sector educator through and through. Um, through his many years at CUNY, first as a professor at Hunter and then as president of Ostos Community College and Queens College, there's been no greater advocate for the professional success of CUNY students than our chancellor, Felix Matos Rodriguez. Um, in the five years since he's taken office, just to give you some sense, <laughs> I'm on to you. <laughs> In the five years since the chancellor took office, CUNY has directly supported nearly 20,000 students in direct connections to internships, paid internships, through programs that we run centrally. That's not including the many partnerships that we have with employers, 20,000 in five years since he started. He's elevated the priority of student career success to the forefront of CUNY's 2030 strategy and pushes us all each day to think about how we can do more to ensure that CUNY students today and for decades to come, are actually able to pursue the career paths that they come to school for. So without his leadership, it's very clear, especially for those of you who know him, that we would not be sitting in this room today. It's my honor to work for the chancellor, and I'd like to introduce you to come up and say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you uh, Lauren, and it's so great to uh, be here, to be with all this incredible partners who've been uh, part of the journey for such a long time, uh, so many other uh, friends and, and collaborators. So delighted, delighted to be here and uh, looking forward also to uh, having Mayor Adams uh, a little bit later, who's been also such an incredible partner in, in this entire journey. I'm going to, as you know, um, this is one area that's particularly exciting and important to me. Uh, so to be disciplined so we can hear from all our wonderful colleagues. I'm actually going to try to stick to uh, my <laughs> remarks here, because if not, this could be a very lengthy and painful uh, uh, exercise, and nobody wants that. So um, uh, again, we are so lucky to have had uh, in this journey uh, partners such as the Bank of New York Mellon, uh, Center Bridge Partners, Blackstone, the Charitable Foundation, Bloomberg LP, Goldman Sachs, uh, so many uh, of these key partners that uh, have come to join us uh, at times coming with different kinds of programs, uh, but have been the kind of partner which provides support for the students, dear to our heart, at the end of the day, but also have brought their own experience, what they have learned from these programs and others, and have helped us to shape their individual programs and now sort of build this much more comprehensive network, which is the blueprint for how we hope that in a couple of years, all of our campuses have a menu of how they're going to be engaging our students uh, from the day one in thinking about careers. So. Uh, to Maura, to Johanna, to Courtney, thank you so much uh, uh, for, for what you do and what you will continue to do because we're going to come back to you asking you for more funding, right? <laughs> so, and we wanted to catch that on tape uh, for future generations to do. Uh, and James, to uh, Company Ventures, thank you so much uh, for, for the partnership, for hosting uh, 
this uh, this this event, and when you were talking about the the thirty internships and and the ongoing work, and thank you, Mia, for making it all happen there in the in in, in the background. Um, it's you know one of the things that's very exciting for me in this announcement is. So you have the individual impact that each one of those internships, each one of those apprenticeships, everything that we do with apply learning, what that does to that individual student. And that is very powerful. And I think is the reason why many of you wake up every morning and either do this work or support this work. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we are reshaping uh, program and policy at scale. Uh, and how often do we get the chance of that great satisfaction of touching individual lives, knowing that you're making a difference, uh, hearing the statistics that James mentioned about uh, the placement of the students uh, and how much they have learned, how much they value the experience, but then also being able to apply that at scale so that we actually reach a lot more students and we create a system that is prioritizing that. So I think that that is uh, the kind of things that those are uh, one-in-a-lifetime opportunities uh, for many of us who are blessed to do many wonderful things in the hats that we that we get to wear. So uh, really, really special uh, day for me today. As you can see, I'm already not using the notes um, <laughs> that, that, that the team uh, prepared. So um, the internships that we have run together have provided pathways to hundreds of students into a world of startups, tech, businesses, and we're thrilled to shine a spotlight on your dedication to opening doors to, uh, to our students. In 2022, um, as New York City, like much of the country, was still recovering from the pandemic, uh, I had the privilege to join Mayor Adams to announce the launch of the CUNY Inclusive Econ Economy Initiative. Uh, it was built on a shared belief that cooperation would be key to the economic recovery of the city. And, uh, and with that in mind, the CUNY Inclusive Economy thought to forge partnerships with many of the companies here today uh, in order to make CUNY a magnet for businesses and launch our students into careers of their choosing. We built on proven models that connect the students to in-demand careers. We thought to expand the capacity of our campuses to grow and sustain talent pipelines with employers uh, across multiple sectors. And we did this by adding industry specialists to build bridges between the employers and the students with a particular focus on fast growing fields such as tech, healthcare, and green jobs. But as I said before, the initiative is more than just connecting those dots. Um, we found this, uh, and I think if anybody here doesn't know how I feel about paid internships, uh, I guess you have not you have not you have not <laughs> suffered through a, a press conference or an event uh, with me, um, but it's not just the chancellor repeating something. It's good data, and we know what we've learned uh, that the students in in the tech programs that we have who participate in a paid internship are three times more likely to secure a job after graduation, uh, and we also know that that first time job uh, they get to it quicker. The first time pay, which as you know follows you through your career is also higher, and we also know that it has an impact on retention, meaning that the students who participate in these internships are bound to uh, stay in course and graduate uh, on time and, and faster. Um, so again, we wanted to uh, keep creating those paths, uh, working with our partners, bringing more hybrid academic and career advisors, individuals that can talk to us to it. It's not just about the right sequencing of the courses which you need to take, which is key and important. It keeps people on track, make sure you don't waste money on tap, all those things which are key, but also injecting a trajectory of thinking about their careers. And uh, you know, as you know, one of the things that we are embedding into this program uh, which was funding that came uh, from some of you, but also in our partnership with Robinhood is our career mapping. In the same way that uh, normally when you are looking at a website and looking about a major and you're trying to figure out your courses and it takes business 101 in the fall, business 102 in the spring, that sequencing that we also have something equally uh, mindful for the students with their careers, right? What are you supposed to be doing that first semester? If you're thinking about a career in this uh, in this field, and we also know that some of the things that we're going to be telling them apply even if they switch 
their major, right? That is that, that having that goal in mind since the beginning, that is going to be really, really helpful to us. So uh, this is why we're doubling down uh, in this vision. So far, we have served over 3,000 students um, uh, with the CUNY Inclusive Economy, about 2,000 uh, organizations engaged uh, working with us centrally or with the campus. And we've done this with uh, a 20 million expansion, which is the next phase that we're doing with the general support of the mayor and our great funding partners that you're gonna hear from in, uh, in, in a second. Uh, we'll be able to expand from six departments that we're already working with to 17. And if we had additional dollars, we could do a lot more. The demand, one of the great things um, and those of you who worked at CUNY for a while, you know that sometimes when um, we have programming that comes from the central office, uh, the welcomeness at the campus is, is not always um, there, right? And, oh, yeah, really, really good. Why don't you try this campus first? And then, you know, we go in the next... <laughs> We go in the next cycle. That's really, really good. But, you know, we're doing middle stage. I cannot take another thing on my campus. Uh, the phenomenal thing is that in this space, actually, I have the presidents, uh, you know, making phone calls, going on Lauren and the team telling me, no, 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 you have, this has to be on my campus. This is really important. I heard from the other presidents how transformational it has been. Uh, so we're really onto something and we want to be able to continue to build this up to scale. Uh, we're building from uh, Blackstone's uh, Launchpad uh, Entrepreneur uh, Program, and, and with them, it's been a true partnership um, in, in, in redesigning when we started the journey uh, and then getting to the point that we're now. We've learned a lot from what they brought to the table. And um, the CUNY Futures in Finance uh, with our good friends, you know, from Centerbridge and Bloomberg and Goldman Sachs, thank you so much. That has also been... Uh, an incredible thought process as we have sort of continued to redefine the program and now welded into the CUNY inclusive uh, economy. Um, and with these critical investments, I think you know the goal. By the end uh, of 2030 in a strategic plan, we want 80% uh, of the CUNY graduates to be in a career of their choice. And I need to make a note here because this is some of the things the chancellor doesn't win, right? I want to be able to say 100%. Right. And then there's always that I go. But sir, 20 uh, percent of our students go to graduate program. So it would not be technically correct to say that 100 percent of your students will be in careers of the chosen because we have 20 percent going to graduate school. So now, you know, the reason why we don't aim for 100 percent, because the other 20 are going to graduate school, which is also something that we like to do in the university. So um, that 80 percent basically means Anybody who's not going to graduate school is going to be in the career of their choice by 2030, right? And that's what that goal actually actually means. Uh, I also want to acknowledge that uh, this is teamwork, uh, and I want to thank Jennifer uh, and Michael, Abby, and Tamara uh, for the work that you all do. Some of you all I'm meeting for the first time in person. I've seen you virtually and in emails. Uh, but also a testament of the great leadership in this field is that the person who's responsible for writing these notes didn't want me to thank her, right? So I'm going to make sure that we give Lauren a big round of applause for her leadership and all that she does in this, in this arena. The message here is muy sencillo, facilito, right? Easy, right? If you want to invest in New York, you invest in CUNY, right? That is the future of our city. Uh, that brings all the incredible talents and assets that New Yorkers can bring to the table to different fields and industries uh, all over the city. Uh, the desire to be in the city and to stay in the city, which is the DNA uh, of our CUNY students, uh, the companies that have been participating in these programs, I have no doubt. I have no doubt that the talent that you've been getting from the City University of New York uh, stands up to the test of any talent that you've been bringing from any other universities that you've been recruited from. But the one thing that I have no doubt is different is the diversity that you get from that, uh, from that team and the commitment that you're going to get uh, of individuals to stay here in New York and help your companies thrive here uh, locally. So thank you. Uh, for for that investment, thank you for that uh, for that belief. Thank you for being incredible uh, thought partners in 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 this journey. 
Uh, the best is yet to come. This is the beginning of crystallizing a vision that we hope uh, in partnership with our campuses that will be the way that career engagement and uh, and this work at CUNY uh, sort of is elevated to the next level. Uh, we need the public support. We need the philanthropic support. And just know that the willingness uh, in the entire CUNY Central team and in our campuses is there. Uh, and we thank you for the partnership. And with that, I turn it back to Lauren. Thank you, Chancellor. Much appreciated. Um, as the Chancellor said, we simply can't do this work without our partners, and today's announcement is truly a public-private collaboration and reflects many years in dedication of doing this work together. So it is my pleasure to bring up first our partner, Maura Pally, the Executive Director of Blackstone Charitable Foundation, mm -hmm. who the Chancellor mentioned has been working with us for several years around an innovative collaboration called the Blackstone Launchpad, and we're thrilled for this next wave of collaboration where that will be integrated into our CUNY Inclusive Economy work. So thank you, Maura, and please. Thank you, Lauren, and thank you, Chancellor Rodriguez. I'm so proud to be able to announce that Blackstone is committing $4 million to CUNY Inclusive Economy Program. And that brings our total commitment to CUNY since 2021 to $10 million. We truly believe in CUNY, the institution, in CUNY leadership, and most importantly, the incredibly inspiring CUNY students. We stand behind them. We support them. We're wowed by them every time we bring them to some type of event and, and just meet with them or place them in an internship. So that's truly why we're here. Um, just a little bit about Blackstone, for those who don't know, since I have the mic. Um, Blackstone is the world's largest alternative asset manager. We own over 230 companies, and we're the world's largest owner of commercial real estate. That is quite big, yes. And what that means is that we have an incredibly unique vantage point to employers. What is happening in businesses? What makes successful businesses? And a key thing that has come out of our unique vantage point is talent matters. And specifically, talent combined of diverse teams of people with varying backgrounds, interests, identities, experiences, make better business decisions. For Blackstone, this is not a charitable thing, though for me it is, is the charitable head, but we really focus on this work because we know it works and we know it matters. So Blackstone Launchpad, which has been mentioned a few times, is really an extension of that work because at Blackstone, our, our goals are really twofold. We want to identify untapped talent and provide them pipelines into companies. And we also work with our companies to develop a culture of inclusivity so that untapped talent is set up to succeed and really have a mobile career in those companies. Thank you. So with Blackstone Launchpad, the way we've chosen to do this is by helping support students learn entrepreneurial skills. So this originally started as a program about a dozen years ago, truly just focused on students who had a business idea and wanted to be a CEO. And what we realized over the years was the entrepreneurial skills, leadership, problem solving, communication, tenacity is what we look for in people at Blackstone and what really every employer looks for. So let's broaden the pool, help support students to develop these skills. And now we're in over 60 schools across the country, primarily HBCUs and Hispanic serving institutions. And we develop programming to help them build these skills. But we also realize that skills are just not enough. Students need opportunity. And my remarks will be even shorter, thanks to Chancellor Rodriguez going th so clearly through how much internship matters. Internships, paid quality internships can be game changers in students' lives. So last year we piloted an internship component to Blackstone, uh, to our Blackstone Launchpad. We're placing students at Blackstone, at our portfolio companies, and at select startups. And this summer we will have placed 250 students, 100 from CUNY, <laughs> at our employer network. We truly believe that this is a game changer and it is such perfect alignment with CUNY's commitment to tripling the number of paid interns who graduate from CUNY. That is an ambitious, bold goal that really will be a career changer. So we couldn't be more happy to partner uh, with the CUNY team on that. So I do really wanna thank 
Chancellor Rodriguez and Lauren and Lauren's whole team, but you two have been such incredible thought partners. You've been patient with us. We've been patient with you. And I really feel we've gotten to such a great place where our shared goals were originally our approaches were different, but our shared goals were always the same. And now they're coming together really beautifully. And I think that's also true for the other corporate partners. So that's not an easy task. Um, so kudos to you and your team for, for getting all of us on the corporate side aligned with your vision and excited about it. Um, I also do want to thank Company Ventures. You've been our partner for over three years. We underwrite the internships, but it's you and your team who help make them so successful. Um, and it's really been a wonderful uh, partnership. So thank you to Company Ventures. And with that, I just say, I think we're all so proud to be here and excited to see the success that students experience through this new program. So thank you so much. Thank you, Maura. I just want to underscore the partnership truly has been tremendous with Blackstone, with these partners on the stage, and we really appreciate the chance to build something together, which is really fabulous. So um, as many of you know, CUNY is 175 years old, and there aren't many institutions that see us as a young up-and-comer. <laughs> But it turns out Bank of New York Mellon has celebrated their 240th anniversary this year. And um, if the current era is any indication, I'm sure if we go back in the record books, we would find evidence in the 1800s of collaboration between our institutions. Because Bank of New York Mellon has been so dedicated to making the city that they call home, one that is more inclusive, one that is truly based on partnership. So I'd like to welcome Courtney Murphy, who's the director and head of strategy and U.S. giving um, for global impact at BNY Mellon. Sorry, Thank that was you. a long title, but I yes. hope I got it. Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> Well, thank you, Lauren, and thank you, Chancellor Rodriguez, for inviting me on behalf of BNY Mellon and the Bank of New York Mellon Foundation. We're proud to continue our longstanding partnership with CUNY. This is a really special collaboration for us, given our deep roots in New York City and the special role that CUNY plays as an esteemed institution that helps New York to work. As Lauren mentioned, BNY Mellon is celebrating our 240th anniversary this year. New York City is our home and has been since 1784. We have grown up with the city. BNY Mellon was the first company traded on the New York Stock Exchange and happens to be the oldest continuously operating company in the city. <clears throat> since our earliest days, we've played an important role in New York's history, and not only in the emergen its emergence as the world's financial center, but also in helping build the city and state itself. So a little bit of trivia, in the early 1800s, BNY Mellon helped to fund boats along the Hudson when the Industrial Revolution took steam. And more recently, we were a lender to the railways, to the Erie Canal, to the New York City subway, and countless other projects that have helped to build New York City and state. Today, we continue this work across many dimensions, one of which is helping to build an inclusive economy. We're proud to both support and recruit from from CUNY. It really is a mutually beneficial relationship. And CUNY students bring, as we've heard, a diverse top talent pipeline that helps to strengthen our company and to make our company more resilient for the long term. We have a focus on mentoring in our internship programs, and we also provide flexible arrangements to help students who we know are extremely hardworking, often holding multiple jobs at the same time. We have a focus on our philanthropic work, our corporate giving, on empowering communities so that everybody can thrive. We serve to advance a more inclusive economy through our philanthropic corporate giving, through efforts to support organizations that provide social mobility, that help to strengthen financially underserved communities, and that also help to build a more resilient future. As part of our $20 million multi-year commitment to developing the workforce of the future, which was fulfilled last year, we provided funding to CUNY for paid internship programs and also a new transfer scholars program. And our impact advising program has wor been working very closely with CUNY's central office on its technology strategy. And now we're excited to contribute to the expansion of the CUNY Inclusive Economy Initiative, which as we've heard, will help to reach even more CUNY students with early exposure to careers and professions through skills building and internships, among many other facets of this incredible programming. The faculty and residence programming will also 
tap our, our experts and our, our leaders as adjunct professors, and we look forward to continuing to support the capacity and operations of CUNY through our pro bono program. Through this initiative, BMY Mellon is proud to continue to invest in the students and families of CUNY who truly represent the best of New York. Thank you. Thank you, Courtney, very much. Welcome, Mr. Mayor. Um, so our last industry partner, but certainly not our least industry partner, is Joanna Meadows, the head of the Centerbridge Foundation and managing director at Centerbridge Partners. Um, so the Centerbridge team under Joanna and the co-founder and managing partner, Jeff Aronson, have gone above and beyond to make sure that CUNY students can not only understand the skills they need to, uh, to enter the financial sector, um, but also have the opportunity to do so. They've dedicated a whole summer cohort of internships um, to CUNY students and brought together additional partners, Goldman Sachs um, and Bloomberg LP, to launch CUNY Futures in Finance, which we have been running for two and a half years now and are thrilled with the results and very excited for it to be coming under the banner of CUNY Inclusive Economy. So, Joanna, please come say a few words. Hi, everybody. It's so nice to see you all today. Thank you for hosting us. Thank you to the Chancellor, to Mayor Adams, and, of course, our partners. Um, I'm Joanna Meadows, the head of the Centerbridge Foundation, as Lauren just said. Um, and as Mara said, since I have the mic, I have to tell you a little bit about Centerbridge <laughs> and why we're here today. Um, so we were um, founded about 20 years ago. We are a global investment manager focused on uh, private equity, private credit, and real estate. And when we were founded in New York City by Mark Gologli and Jeff Aronson, we also established our philanthropic foundation, which has been ingrained in our firm's culture ever since. Our mission, as many of our missions here today, are to provide economic um, and educational opportunities for young people so they could achieve their potential. And we approach that mission a few different ways. Through our philanthropic investments in partnership with Bain & Company, who provides strategic support. I see Carrie here today. Um, our team volunteer initiatives across New York and London. And of course, our multifaceted, deep partnership with CUNY. We simply cannot accomplish our mission without CUNY, the biggest engine of social mobility in the country in our own backyard, right, which works tirelessly to help students reach the middle class. So our CUNY partnership has four dimensions. Don't worry, I won't go through each one um, totally, uh, but we have our fellowship, we have philanthropic uh, support. We have our summer internship, as Lauren just mentioned, and of course, Futures in Finance, which I'll talk about in a second. But our partnership really began about eight years ago, sitting around the table thinking about how do we walk the walk? How do we support CUNY students in not only on the philanthropic side, but getting them into careers in our industry? So we developed uh, the Invest Investment Industry Fellowship, nine-month program for sophomores and juniors who want to get into the industry. And all of our workshops are run by our Centerbridge team members, their mentors to the fellows as well. To date, we've worked with over 130 fellows, most of whom have interned, and many of whom are already working in our industry today. A f yes. yes. Thank you. Um, actually, a few of them met Mayor Adams on Zoom this fall, which we were really fortunate um, about. And also one of our uh, fellows is here today, Gabriella. Um, so while this fellowship has been and continues to be quite successful, uh, we knew and we strongly believe that we should not be doing this work alone. And that's why we're here today, to talk about partnership and the impact that partnership can have. So a few years into running that fel the fellowship, we partnered with our friends at Goldman and at Bloomberg, who were already doing incredible work with CUNY as well. But to together, as equal partners, take one step further to help build a bridge to the thousands of young people who are from CUNY who are looking for jobs in our sector and to connect them to our companies, not just the three of ours, but to many financial sector companies across New York City. So we announced Futures in Finance in 2021 and launched it in 2022 to build the capacity, really hiring team members across three campuses, Lehman, Brooklyn, and City. Um, to expose 3,000 uh, students to this industry. And as we move this initiative to the next phase of growth, all of us, Bloomberg, Goldman, and Centerbridge, 
are incredibly excited that we could roll futures and finance into the CUNY Inclusive Economy Initiative as the first finance track. I think that could. So working together with the additional support of the city, with a CUNY team embedded in academic departments, we'll be able to connect with more students, more faculty, and more industry leaders to help students achieve their goals. Um, and we look forward to many more companies coming together at the table with us to do this. Uh, I'm also like the chancellor when we're among this crowd, we should certainly be saying that. Because at the end of the day, we deeply believe that investing in CUNY's strong, diverse talent together and establishing this, these career pathways is not only important for CUNY, it's not only important for the firms here today, but it's imperative for our city. It's exactly what the chancellor said at the beginning of this. So I'm looking forward to what's ahead for CIE Futures and Finance, to continuing to work together with Lauren's amazing team day in and day out, get excited. Um, and we're here for the ride and we're really excited. So thank you all so much. Thank you so much, Joanna, for your dedication, your magnetism, and the emails. I know you're going to write to a million people after this to get them on board. Now it is our great fortune, and we are so grateful to have, closing out this program, a tremendous champion for economic mobility, a two-time CUNY graduate himself, the 110th mayor of the city of New York, Eric Adams. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and, and Thanks to Chancellor. Uh, this was uh, you know, my first year in office. We talked about this initiative, and people often ask, uh, why is this so uh, important? And I think Joanna really uh, nailed it uh, when she stated it is not only the mission of her uh, company, uh, but it is really the mission of our city, when you think about it. And I always use the analogy, you know, when I was, uh, my family owns a lot of land in Alabama, and when I go down, I, you know, sort of play the farmer role and I move uh, hay from one side of the uh, land to the next. And uh, one day the trailer, the trailer broke down and I had to figure out to accomplish the task. And I hooked up a motorcycle to one of the wagons and moved it over to the other. And when I finished, I thought about it. I said, I learned this in Cambodia. Uh, they don't have a lot of cars, so they'll use something called a tut tut to move um, their items, everything they move on the tut tut. And when you think of CUNY, you often say, well, okay, we're doing the students a favor. No, you're not. The students are doing us a favor. If we're going to solve global problems, then we have to, to have a global workforce. And we're going to need individuals to sit in a room with us who are going to bring their cultural understandings and how they viewed life and their life experiences. Those intangibles are just invaluable. Uh, when you sit down in a boardroom, if everyone in the boardroom looks like you, talk like you, walk like you, eat the same food, do the same thing, you're going to have the monolithic approach to face a global problem. The problems we're facing now is going to take... Wait a minute, I remember grandma used to use this to do that. I remember grandfather used to do this to do that. All of that relationship, uh, you could be academically smart and come from some of the major uh, expensive institutions. I know it firsthand because I'm still paying my son's, you know, man, this, you know. Uh, but, you know, that's all great. But that emotional intelligence from life experiences of growing up in New York City where 4.1 million people use the subway system, 8.3 million people with 35 million opinions telling you how to do things. Uh, so much is happening here. The largest number of graduates are uh, coming to New York City. We are outpacing the entire uh, country in new uh, tech uh, startups that are coming here. Uh, and the relationships we have. This is, a, this is an international city, and nothing personifies the international aspect of our city than CUNY. You go to CUNY, and the chancellor is so proud to throw out those numbers of uh, how many different college, I mean, how many different countries, how many different languages, uh, how many different life experiences. Uh, that diversity is going to produce the better product. 
And this is a real win because you can build pipelines to many things, but a pipeline to profession is going to lift up our entire city. And I'm so excited the chancellor had the vision to see uh, what were the possibilities. Thank you so much for this, of bringing uh, this level of diversity of just walk anytime you want to be optimistic about our future, go on a CUNY campus. Walk through Baru, walk through New York City College of Technology, uh, walk through Brooklyn College, walk through Mega Evans College. You walk through and you can feel the energy uh, that I believe diversity comes with. My years, at, I'm a community twofer, as it was stated. Uh, my years at New York City College of Technology, uh, I knew nothing about sailing the waters of Mykonos, Greece, until I met someone from Greece. I knew nothing about thinking about going to Moscow until I met a Russian-speaking student. Uh, you know, when you think about all of your creative energy, it comes from in that classroom. And now it's going to the boardrooms. You're going to have uh, someone from the South Bronx telling you, how do you expand uh, financial literacy and how do you get new bankers? Uh, you're going to have someone from Brownsville uh, saying, how do we deal with the food insecurity in our community? So if you want to open a Sweet Greens, uh, here's a way to do it to make it attractive to the community. Or South Jamaica, Queens, uh, right by your college. And how do you use technology to identify uh, the issues around climate change? This is what it's going to take. This is, this is the type of visionary leadership that we need. We have the best product uh, in this entire country because of our diversity. And for some reason, we ignored these CUNY students. We did not believe they brought uh, all that they have to offer. And now with partnerships with these great corporations, they are realizing, because they're seeing, they're forward thinking, they're realizing that the answer lies in our CUNY institutions. So CUNY Inclusive Economic Initiative is a real win for us. Uh, we may not have won the game yesterday, but we have a win today, and we still got the Rangers. Still got the Rangers. You know, uh, the program that put talented CUNY students on the path to good paying career jobs, and we're really excited about it. And look at today, if you, the numbers weren't mentioned, we have served over 3,100 students with more than 2,000 industry partners and advanced, advanced our goal to connect 80% of CUNY graduates with career following graduation. Uh, in 2030. And we, with the money's there, it includes a $4.8 million that's baseline in the city budget. So it's not going away. $7 million from our private partners to reach an additional 1,200 uh, CUNY students <laughs> annually across over 20 academic departments. Uh, as part of our uh, spring job sprint, uh, we have more jobs in this city than the city's history. But what has happened in the past is that it was not spread out evenly. Came into office, blacks' unemployment was four times the rates of white. We cut that in half for the first time since 2019. We're down to less than 8%. So we're seeing that prosperity, the popularity, turn into prosperity for our entire city. And I am just really proud of this initiative. This is an initiative that's going to help to include all New Yorkers to be part of the popularity of our brand and turning into prosperity for all New Yorkers. So thank you to our partners. Thank you for making this happen. Let's continue to employ New Yorkers and CUNY students. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. And with that, we look forward to working with all of you and new partners as we get started in this new expansion. Thank you for coming. Look forward to working with you. Michael, oh. how are you? <laughs> I'm good. Um, I got two questions, actually. The first is, do you feel betrayed by Andrew Cuomo uh, wanting this whole, the whole lease house thing? 
Uh, uh, okay, go ahead, go ahead, Michael, because I like Michael. <laughs> Yes. So where precisely is this land in Alabama when you're going down playing Farmer Joe? And <laughs> Cecil. Cecil in Montgomery is where my family's from. That's, uh, where, that's, where, my, that's where my grandparents are like from. Down south Alabama? Yeah, yeah. Well, ooh. I just yes. Know, I just know <laughs> yes. part of the Yes. Know it's, uh, it's, it's, in, it's in Alabama. We own a lot of land down there from my grandparents uh, in Alabama. And we still hold, they held on to it. A lot was stolen. Uh, but they're still holding on to it. And um, uh, I don't be, feel betrayed. People, Many people have opinions. 3.8, 8.3 million New Yorkers, 38, 35 million opinions. That's just life in a big city. Do you think he's running for uh, mayor? Not, not concerned with that. I'm concerned with governing an amazing city. And, you know, you don't spend 35 years climbing to the top of the mountain and worry about the view. You enjoy the view. Right now I'm on the top of the mountain. I'm the mayor of the greatest city on the globe. Talk about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.